Hi. So I broke my phone and now I only have a shitty laptop camera to record myself with. Such is life. But um yeah, I guess I'm just gonna talk about that bitch Shanny some more. Um Yeah, I left some shitty comments on her last video, but I felt like she was taking kind of a jab at me. You know, I know that I've gotten to her before. She's actually brought me up in a video where she said I made fun of her for crying about moving from one gorgeous house to another gorgeous house. And uh, that it seemed like this whole thing was like, well, some of us have to go to do our jobs. Some of us have to do our jobs and they don't get the privilege that I do. They don't have a huge YouTube following. They don't have blah, blah, blah. And yeah, Shani, some of us do go to jobs. Um, and I think that you knew what you were doing. Um, I am less afraid of directly confronting you, though. And... Um, I don't know. That whole thing was weird. Your whole channel is weird, dude. And I think that you are only hurting yourself and disadvantaging yourself by living in your weird little Instagram and YouTube bubble. Um, I do have to work jobs. I do have to, uh, I have to do what most people do. I have to get up and I have to face life. I have to fix it myself. And, um, You know, I don't do that because I'm a rock star. I do that because life fucking sucks. And, um, you just gotta do what you have to do. And then you gotta get up again and do it the next day. And, um, a lot of people like Shani and like Nick Akato or Amarlyn Reed or something, they kind of made like this protective bubble of the world that they get to live in. And, you know, Shani's shit has been going on for a really long time. And whenever she wasn't protected by YouTube, she was always protected by her family or her husband or something. And she's been very sheltered from life. But I mean, sheltering in and of itself is a, its own kind of trauma and its own kind of like, it, it still fucks you up. It's not, you don't grow and thrive in that kind of environment. And that's why you're still acting like this little girl who has to rely on her supporters and uh, her husband and uh, rely on everybody she has. to just live her life and get to the next day. It's like, like I get this vibe that she can't do anything without seeking validation for it. And um, a lot of people with eating disorders are in this kind of arrested development. And um, I get it. I get that it's hard to move past from. And um, I think that I'm not really immune to it. I think that, uh, but I think that I, instead of internalizing it, I lash out and, um, that might make me, I, I get that I seem very brash to a lot of people and, uh, maybe I am, but I just don't want to compromise honesty for the sake of popularity. Um, I might not always be everybody's favorite, but uh, whenever I am, it's by people who matter because they value honesty. And I think um, valuing people who tell you what you want to hear um, hinders you. And, um, 
there are a lot of truths about ourselves that are very uncomfortable and difficult to face. And um, I understand why it's going to be hard to change the narrative in your head to um, and I'm trying to get across what I want to say but it sounds so ambiguous because it's you know it's not just an eating disorder it's not just uh, you like your problems aren't these um, little problems that go into a neat little box and can, uh, I don't, like, there's just so much to unpack here. There's just this, this need to, for it to be a part of your identity. Um, there's this, uh, validation seeking component. Um, and then there's this clusterfuck of uh, trauma that you still don't understand and don't know how you'll ever understand and have become entirely obsessed with because it feels easier to be held back by it. It feels easier to live in the negativity and to live in the everything that fucked you up because that way you'll always have an excuse for being a failure that day. And not only that, but um, it's easier to get addicted to being a failure to uh, because that way, I mean, duh, it's easier to just fail than it is to try. And it's easier to, uh, it's even easier whenever you think you have all these excuses for it. But um, the reality of it is everybody has been hurt and traumatized with or without these, like, I, I have, um, like, binged and purged to the point where I was having hypoglycemic attacks so bad I was going blind, and I had to go to work, and I still fucking got there because I would have lost a job that I needed to support my family if I hadn't, and, um, it's really just a quick, Google fix whenever you can't afford to go to a doctor. Um, I mean, whenever you have these kinds of problems. Oh, and if that does ever fucking happen to you, like, do just eat a piece of candy or something. It's hypoglycemia. It's, um, I've read a lot of reports about people with these problems, like losing their vision and stuff before, and it's, uh, usually attributed to, um, insulin problems. Um, I mean, I reversed it and, uh, I found another way to function just because I didn't have a choice. And I think having a choice to stay sick is what's keeping so many people sick. Like whenever um, you're in a position where you can choose to do this, you will. And uh, I don't know. I guess that's all I have to say for that about right now. Um, yeah, bye.